So shock control testing is performed to assess whether an object can survive shock loads from an explosive event or a collision. So think of things like manufacture, shipping, use, misuse, drop testing, etc. And there are two main types of shock control testing. There's classic shock, in which the shock impact is a determined reference time signal, like a half sign or a triangle pulse. And then there's also shock response analysis with shock response synthesis. So let's talk about classic shock first. In classic shock, we are defining our target using a acceleration versus time pulse. So we're moving away from the frequency domain when we get into classic shock. And this time pulse has three main components. It's got the main pulse, a pre-pulse, and a post-pulse. The main pulse is typically determined from one of these reference time signals, like a half sign, triangle, initial or terminal peak, or a rectangle. You could also use a measured pulse for this main pulse. But for classic pulse, a lot of these are sort of predefined pulses that you can use in the software, and I'll, sh I'll show that. And then we also have this pre and post pulse. So what is the function of this pre and post pulse? Well, these serve to ensure that the shaker displacement and velocity begin and terminate at zero. So if we just had the main pulse, for example, a rectangular pulse, and we integrated that into velocity and then also integrated into displacement, you can see that if we just had that main pulse, the velocity and displacement would not end at zero. And this would be especially troubling if we did multiple shots or multiple pulses because the velocity and displacement values would just sort of skyrocket and be much, much too high for our shaker limitations. So we add these pre and post pulses for practicality reasons so that the shaker armature begins at zero at the beginning and end of the pulse. So now instead of just having the single pulse with no pre and post pulse, we add those pulses in and you can see that now when we integrate and double integrate, we have our velocity and displacement beginning and ending at zero, which is not only practical in terms of the shaker armature, but also if we wanna do multiple pulses, we won't continue to increase our displacement. So there are a couple of different uh, pre and post pulse types that you can use, such as single-sided, double-sided, optimized, minimized, the benefit for single-sided is it's useful when a shaker has an asymmetrical stroke. double side is useful for a bipolar armature. Optimized is going to be good with shocks with high acceleration amplitudes on shakers with a more limited stroke. And minimized is going to minimize the total needed displacement of the shaker while obtaining symmetrical displacement. So depending on your application, you can choose a different pre-post pulse appearance. So that's, that's a very basic introduction into classic shock control, where you choose your main pulse, your pre and post pulse, and then you run the test in the time domain. All right, so here we have our shock control software. And first I'll show you where that classic shock control is defined. So under shock setup, there is a drop down here where we can either do classic or SRS. So if I do classical and I come into my profile editor, you can see those classic main pulse shapes that we were talking about. So you just select one of these main shapes and here are the post pulse shapes that we were talking about before as well. So this is where you would define your target profile for your classic shock test. Now, if you wanted to do the SRA, SRS method, you would drop this down to SRS. 